today we're going to talk about the truth about saving money. Now, you hear people talk all the time about when they're trying to grow their business that they need money to make money. And I think a lot of that's true. Um, I do believe that you have to have money while well, everyone's excuse is all the time that they don't have the money. Okay, and they don't know how to get the money. So I want to back things up a little bit, start from scratch with you guys, and say this is how we're going to do it from step one. This is how you do it from the get-go. Okay, so first off, it requires sacrifice. You're going to have to give up some things that you don't absolutely need to have in your life. Okay, so there may be a lot of things you can cut. Maybe you don't have to have that brand new car or that brand new truck. Or maybe you don't have to have a beautiful home, things like that. Maybe, maybe you could save a lot more money if you didn't have those things. You weren't paying those big old balloon payments every place, right? So that's just one of the things. You know, maybe you don't need to go out and, you know, eat the top of the line lunch meat or, you know, get DiGiorno's pizzas or, uh, you know, tombstone pizzas when you can get other pizzas, you know, cheaper. You know, maybe there's things that you can do to save money. Maybe you don't have to buy all those scratch-off tickets every time you go to the gas station and maybe you could just stop being frivolous with your money, okay? All about sacrifices. If you don't make sacrifices, you're never going to get anywhere. If you're trying to get ahead in life and you need money to do that, uh, you've got to start saving some money somewhere, right? So there's things that you can look at. So uh, a change in habit is a big thing. Changing your habits make the difference between saving money and not saving money a lot of times. So, for example, maybe you smoke cigarettes or something. Maybe if you just cut back a little bit and you weren't doing two, three packs a day, maybe you could, could cut back to a pack, pack and a half a day or something like that, you know. I'm never going to tell you to quit drinking beer because that's just wrong, okay. So, don't touch that one. Move on to everything else instead. So, your habits, your spending habits. So, let's say every Friday when you get your check, you go out on the town and you blow money in a bar, you blow 50, 60, $100 in a bar, and at the end of the weekend, you you're barely have enough money left to get through the week, right? Some of those habits can change. You don't need to blow all that money in the bar, okay? You could smuggle it in like we used to. We used to go out to our car. We would drink beer out in our car, you know, get one out of there, get a Bud Light, and then just go back in the bars if we bought it. We did that all the time. Change in habits, see? So, it'll help you out if you do make some changes. All right, that being said, um, just like a diet, you can't expect to lose weight if you just keep eating chocolate and you just keep drinking beers. But again, I'm not asking you to quit drinking beer because that'd be just wrong. So, but you can't expect to make changes, or you can't expect changes if you don't make changes, okay? So, if you are on that diet, if you need to start eating lettuce or whatever, and I'm, I'm one guilty of it, you know, I love my sweets, right? But if I don't change the habits, change some of the things that I've done or I'm currently doing, how do I expect to get better, right? It's difficult. It's difficult to do that. But um, no change without changes being made. Keep that in the back of your mind all the time. So when I talk about changing your habits, you have to change things in order for you to get better sometimes, okay? Um, if you are an example, a good friend of mine constantly goes drinking and driving. Well, he keeps getting drunk driving, right? Until you make changes in your life, that stops. So what does he do now? He has people take him back and forth to the bars, which is totally cool, right? I mean, he, he doesn't, he's not going to kill somebody doing that. Okay, but he had to make those changes, and he's made that a staple in his life now, so that's a constant. That's something that never changes. It's always there. It's always going to be there, right? All right, so next thing. Uh, if you're already bare-boned, if you've already done that, you're through that step, and you're just like, you know, George, I am just, it, we're scraping by the way it is. You know, we've made these changes. We've done all these things. We're, you know, we're, we're just scraping by, you know. Well, you got some choices to make then. If you cut everywhere you can cut and you've given up a lot of the things that, that you had and you're, you're trying to save that money to get a business going or, or to do something to get you ahead in life and hopefully it's getting a business going, then you've got some changes that you need to make there. If you've already bare boned yourself and you still can't save any money and you've changed your habits, you've done all these things, then you've got a few options. Number one, ask your boss for a raise because you're not making enough. 
Maybe the cost of inflation is so high that you just can't get out from under it, right? Maybe you're not making enough money. Ask for a raise. What's the worst you're going to do? Say no? Okay, he says no. Then maybe look for another job, right? Maybe that's the next thing you need to do. Um, one way or the other, you got if you're going to get ahead, you've got to make those changes. So like when, back in the day, I love throwing up the Kmart thing. Every time I got a raise for Kmart, the cost of the insurances, medical insurance and all that, just came up and wiped it right out. And that happened year after year after year after year, and I'm just so fed up with it, and I have tried to explain that to people over and over again. That was a dead-end job for me, and I didn't really realize it. I actually thought they were going to groom me for a district manager position, but the whole company folded up there pretty much, or most, the majority of them. And our store was just eliminated. So, but it's a whole other topic. But anyway, the other thing, uh, you know, that's, again, about being in a job and working for somebody else. You know, if you want to get ahead, you want to get your own business going. And everybody sits there and says they want to do it, but they never make the frickin' changes necessary to do it, okay? If you've gone to your boss and say, boss, I need to make a little more money. Yeah, I'm just not able to make ends meet. Then he says no, okay. Well, then you need to start looking for another job, maybe. A job that pays more money so that you can put money aside, right? That's, that's an option. The other thing you can do, which is what I did, was start a side hustle. So I started the lawn care business on the side, all right? Get something going on the side that is making extra money so you can take that money and go to a bank, take out a loan to start your own business, okay? They're never gonna give you the money if you don't have some money down, okay? You can't just walk in there and say, hey, I wanna start a Mosquito Police franchise and they're just gonna shell over the money to you to do that. That's not gonna happen, okay? However, now if you have a down payment that you can give the bank, then they're more apt to work with you because they've seen you save your money. Good time, tax time, perfect time. When you get all that money back, don't go blowing it on bullshit that you don't need. There's money right there you could save, that's instant. Put it in a coffee can in your bedroom, put it someplace where you will have it and when you get enough money saved up, then you can go to the bank. Go to the bank now, find out how much money do you need to have. Tell them what you want to do. Do all your homework on that. If you need to come up with you know, $5,000 for them to borrow you 10,000, okay, now you know what you have to have. Now you know, that's your starting ground. Now you know, and you let them know, hey, I'm gonna be back here in six months with that money, or I'm gonna be back here in a year with that money. So keep me in mind, because we're gonna do this, we're gonna make this happen. And then do that, save the money all year for those six months or whatever, go back and get your, your loan and to get your business started, okay? All right, that being said, um, if it was easy to do, the vast majority of Americans wouldn't be broke today, okay? The vast majority of Americans spend money that they don't even have yet. Their, their credit card debt, and again, depending on who you listen to, it's through the roof on a lot of them, okay? Some of them have multiple cards and they're all maxed out. Some people are mortgaging their homes, you know, and those mortgages are maxed out. They got double mortgages on their houses. Most people are living beyond their means today. Okay, I don't know exactly what the percentage is, but it's like like 90% or something was one of the last things I heard of people that couldn't come up, you know, or couldn't uh, finance very much, or they were in debt a lot, you know. So it, it's bad, and if you want to be different than the majority of people out there, if you want to be in that, say, five, let's just say 5% of people that actually go somewhere and do stuff with their life um, and, and grow their, you know, grow the money to make a business and, and make good in life and make a lot of money in life, those are, let's say, your five percenters, okay? If you want to be one of those, you got to do what the majority of people are not doing. And the majority of people are not saving their money. They're not saving their money, okay? You don't want to be one of them. You want to be one of the five percenters that is saving your money, right? All right, that being said, um, all you need is enough for that down payment. We talked about that with the bank. Don't think that, oh, I want to get a business started, but I need 50000 to make that happen. Well, if, if you need $50,000 to make something like that happen, you're going to have to save a lot more than $5,000 to go to the bank. But again, go to one of these lending uh, facilities, talk to them, and find out, hey, what do I need to have? And don't just go to one, go to several, okay? Take the time, go talk to them. They'll all be a little different, <coughs> but they will all tell you, what you're gonna to need to have in order for them to give you money. All right, one of the things you can do today is start trimming the fat, okay? 
you start trimming the fat off of everything. Like you don't need to have maybe Netflix, Hulu, Dish, uh, TV network, YouTube, movie channel. Maybe you don't need to have all those things. Maybe you could just scale that down a little bit. Um, just a friend of mine, uh, just recently we found out was paying almost $200 a month. And the guy watches very few channels, you know. So it's money that's just spent foolishly every month, okay. So start trimming the fat off of those. You don't need to have that, right. All right. Um, after you've saved the money, my advice to you is to invest the money. This is why you're saving the money to begin with. You guys should be saving money. There's rainy day stuff that comes up all the time. You could just develop a toothache tomorrow and you go into the dentist and it's one of your main choppers or one of your front teeth, right? And you go in there, it's like, look, this is in my grill, man. I got to have this fixed. But they want to do a root canal on it and that's $2,000 or $2,500. That's rainy day money. How are you going to pay for that, right? How are you going to pay for that? Somehow you got to hope that that dentist is going to let you make payments to him. Okay, and you can bet your ass there'll be interest on those payments to that dentist too. So therefore, everybody should be trying to save money and put it aside for a rainy day. You get your tax checks back. That's what you need to be doing with that money. Don't go blow it. Don't go get that big screen TV that you feel like you just have to have. Okay, because you don't have to have it, especially if you're trying to get ahead in life. If you want to be like the vast majority of Americans and sit on your ass and not worry about getting ahead, because you think Uncle Sam is going to take care of you. Number one, you're a fool. And number two, you will never have anything in your life if you do that. So you need to get your mindset wrapped around getting out of that rut. Getting out of that rut by starting to trim the fat on all the things that you don't have to have. You don't have to have the, the most expensive bologna in the store, right? I still buy the cheap stuff to this day. And I don't care. I'm sure that other meat's better for me, this, that, and the other. Well, when I'm saving money... I'm saving money and I'm doing it wherever I can. It's not just there. I do it on everything. We don't need more than Netflix. You know, we don't need more than, you know, um, I don't have to wear uh, name brand clothing, right? I don't have to do all of those things. Okay. So anyway, trim the fat where you can. Bottom line in that. All right. So now um, working hard. You guys have got to work harder. You can't expect these changes to happen and everything's just going to be okay if you don't work hard for it. Okay, if it's worth having, it's, work, it's worth working hard for. Okay, uh, again, back to the change thing, you know that, that nothing's going to change unless you change. So if it means you get in a side job or a side hustle of some sort, so be it. That's what it means. Maybe you know somebody that could borrow you the money to, if you wanted to start a lawn care company on the side. Maybe they would front you the money for, you know, a cheap mower and a trimmer and whatnot and something just to get going, right? You don't know until you ask. Start asking around, okay? Um, as you save this money and you do get it set aside, okay, and let's say you invest it into some sort of a business and, and hopefully it's a, a productive business where you know you can scale it, but if you do get into that stuff, you take the money that you make from that business, okay, so you saved a little bit right here, and then you put it into a business right here, and now this business has made you a little money. Now you take that money and then reinvest it, either reinvest it into this business to make it bigger. Maybe you need better equipment. Uh, you can do that or you can reinvest it into other businesses. And that's kind of what we did. So as these businesses that we currently have laid out, as they need things like for lawn care, for example, maybe they need new equipment. My lawn care account is what pays for that new equipment. In the landscape division, if we need more money in there, if we need more, uh, we want to get maybe a new backhoe this year or something, well, that landscape money pays for that. Each business should pay for all the upgrades as you go through life, okay? Start in the beginning, change your habits, save your money, invest it in something, then take the money from that, either upgrade or invest it into another business. But that's how you grow. That's how you end up with multiple streams of income, all right? All right, so my, my last bit of advice to all of you is this. You want to be one of those five percenters, okay? You want to be different than everybody else. I'm telling you this from experience. If you wait and, and you wait and say, I'm going to do it someday, all you're doing is kicking the can down the road. You keep kicking it down the road and kicking it down the road, and before you know it, you're old and broke. Then you're screwed. You know, what are you going to do when you're 60 years old? Now you want to go and try and do something? I mean, man, you got to 
you got to get your, your head on straight. you got to think of these things while you're young. And you young guys that are out there, don't... I, I know you're watching this channel, and I don't think for a second that you're not going to get old because you are going to get old. I never thought I was going to get old. I thought I was invincible. I was like freaking Superman back in the day. I did everything, and I wasn't afraid of anybody or anything. Well, now my back is shot. My knees are shot. I have issues, right? I have health issues. I have asthma. You know, uh, things that I guess I didn't count on coming back in. A lot of things came into play, and I am thankful that I had, number one, good family behind me. Number two, good people that we surround ourselves with. And three, the fact that we invested in ourselves. I hope you take my advice. Good luck. Don't forget, if you like this video, subscribe, hit the little bell notification. They'll let you know when the next video comes out. And as always, we appreciate you watching. Thank you.